I've now done what I can with welding the rear cross member on from the top. I need to flip it over and do the rest and also fill in all that metal that isn't there. But it's occurred to me that whilst it's in this position, it's dead flat, it's an ideal opportunity to fit the outriggers. So I've dragged them all out. Now these outriggers, they're um, pattern replacement parts, so they have this great big back plate so that when you weld it on presumably you can go from the dodgy metal onto some good stuff but it's all good stuff on this chassis so I won't be needing these back plates I'm going to cut these off of all of them um, then I'm going to take them all to the uh, to the blasting cabinet and get the paint off because they won't have the plates on here I'll be able to blast the inside and make sure there's no paint in there the reason that's important is because obviously all this is going to be dipped in hot zinc so I don't want any trace of paint on it at all if at all possible So what I need to do now is some, I was going to say accurate layout, as accurate as I can lay out. By using the measurements that are listed here, I can use the chassis plan to lay out where I need to put the outriggers. But it's not that straightforward because obviously there's only a certain amount of measurements, of dimensions listed here. So I've got to work out the rest of them basically. And what that entails is just doing some sums. So, got there, that's the, the rear. Now I've double checked and I've actually put the rear cross member in just the right place. So, not only is that a relief, but I can use that as a datum point to lay out the others. I suspect a proper way of doing this would be to um, use plumb lines to support the whole chassis above a, uh, a nice clean floor and then drop lines down from the various points of the chassis and then take the measurements between those lines on the floor. Now I don't have a floor like that and I have the chassis on the bench so I'm just going to work with what I've got. But I think I think it will work out. Let's get all these out of the way for a moment. So this one's fairly easy because this plane of it this edge here is in line with the back edge of this cross member here. And that tallies with what I've just measured, so all good so far. G, which is there, plus H, which is there to there. Uh, minus mm which is there to there so I've just measured from here the rear to the leading edge of that outrigger so that's there to there now I've just realized I can double check that because I've got this measurement from the hole in the chassis where the rear of the front spring goes so I can go mm this measurement minus k that measurement and that will give me the distance from the leading edge of the outrigger to the middle of that hole 42 
check the other side. There. Hmm. Now what's strange here, <laughs> so here I've got the measurement from the rear of the chassis is this blue line here. The measurement from the centre line of this hole is this blue line here. They don't match up. But <laughs> even more peculiar is I can see the original line where the um, outrigger was. So this is the, re the um, replacement one that's been welded on here and obviously that's got those sticky alley bits that's been stuck on. There's a bit of the original weld that's here. Possibly you could make out that's a weld bead there and there's a bit of it left down here as well. That would have been the leading edge of the outrigger. That doesn't correspond to either of the marks that I've just made. <laughs> So what I think about what to do about these ones, I'm going to get on and stick these outriggers on because I'm confident of the locations of the pair here and the pair here. So I'll get on with those and hopefully while I'm doing that <laughs> something will occur to me what I can do about these ones. I've been doing a whole bunch of surveying and trying to decide where to put the front outriggers which are these ones that hold the bulkhead on or will hold the bulkhead on you should be able to see not only the blue marks that I've been made on there in my surveying attempts but the also the traces of the old outriggers so there was the original one and a later replacement one which is the one that I chopped off so the original one the welding is here, these are the weld beads, the remains of, and the replacement is set, it's actually pitched over a bit like that, and that's what this larger one is here. Now, when I've measured it from the rear of the chassis, it's come up to here, this line. When I've measured from the spring mounting point, the centre of that hole, back to here, I've come up with this distance here, so there's a quite a large discrepancy there, about 12 mil or half an inch. I then checked on a fairly new um, replica chassis, a Richards chassis, and on the Richards chassis, I've come up with these two points here as being the uh, top front edge and rear edge of the bulkhead outrigger. So if I put that there and put it fairly straight. That corresponds really quite well to this mark, not quite so well with the one that's in the book. 
and of course this one's way out. <laughs> What's all that measuring tell us? <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't really bring much clarity to the situation. What I'm going to do is put it pretty much where I, f I found the um, outrigger to be on the replica chassis because that corresponds very well to the other outriggers that I've got so overall that should be in the ballpark of being right. Anyway, that's what I'm going to go with. here is some braces going across here. So this is just standard stuff, a bit of angle line. Cool. The next and final bit of chassis replacement is to put the dumb irons on. These are the dumb irons. The bits that go right on the front of the chassis. Now these I sorted out way back in episode 6 I think it was. Um, they're pretty much ready to go on except I did get one bit wrong when I was restoring these and thanks to a chap called Nick for pointing this out. Thanks Nick if you're watching. This bit here which I left open I need to seal up. My excuse is that the original one was so badly, well, <laughs> mostly not there, that I, I missed that. But I have checked since and he's completely right, that does need welding up. Um, while I'm at it, I'm going to tidy up uh, these welds going here and here, because um, I think I need to re-weld those with a bit more oomph. There we are then, all filled in. And I took the opportunity as well just to tidy up the welds around here and make them a bit nicer. I can fit it. So these are actually handed. It, uh, they're not interchangeable, the dumb irons. You can see there, these bits here come over like that on this one. So this one's going to go here. It's almost there now. So I've got to bear in mind that when I cut this off, there was a gap when I'm cutting this one. So I can tell exactly where to position it because I've got this cut where I cut through the dumb iron. I went into this bit of metal as well, into this bracket. So I know exactly the gap that I should leave. And I can completely get that corner sorted. So if I hold that in position, I'm going to tack that bit and take it from there. looks okay now, I think I've got the curve about right. I can now push this chisel in and out to adjust the bottom. Let's take a measurement. Oh yes, there we go, just there. Eight, seven, nine. Okay, just there, that's perfect. Yeah, I'll go for it. 
bubble is just touching the line there. Now if this is the same as this, all is well. It's a bit of a crude measurement, but yes, I'd say that's the nearest damage. Excellent. Well, that's good enough for me. Get some more weld on there. In terms of structure, we're there. Obviously I've still got plenty of actual work to do, I've got to now flip it upside down again and do the upside down parts of the out, all the outriggers and the um, rear cross member and the dumb lines. But in terms of positioning and everything and getting it all somewhat resembling the Land Rover chassis again, like I say, we're there. Oof. 